Hi there, Mr. Davidson. It's me, Jenna, from marketing. You may also remember me from that one time where I hit you with my car, aka yesterday. I am so sorry for almost murdering you. Oh God. This is very uncomfortable for me, although it must be even more uncomfortable for you. Okay, moving on. Anyway, I'm so sorry. You know how it is when you're backing out of your parking spot and then out of the corner of your eye, you catch Jared from accounting and he's so gorgeous and he's smiling and laughing. And what if he's smiling and laughing with you at your wedding during your first dance to At Last, which was always your song, even before the Obamas had it. Uh -huh. You're wearing this gorgeous gown and dancing under the twinkling lights and you turn to him and say, this is perfect. And he says to you, you're perfect. And then, uh, right. Anyway, I think I'm just gonna go. I'll see you on Monday. Probably not, because you're still gonna be here in the hospital, right? Um, I'm just gonna go. Please don't fire me. I'll see you later. Scene. <laughs> okay, Monica, just stop. Okay, look, you've been after me for the past hour about this, and really, I don't wanna go on a blind date, okay? That's where single people go to die. Okay, and besides, I don't, I don't have time for it right now. There's, there's a lot going on with my acting career right now. Sort of. You know, I, I met with the new agents, and I, I, I did that line on season one of Dexter. <laughs> so what if it was a long time ago? I mean, I got, I got to build on that gig. You know, I got to stay in the fight. It's, it's, like, it's like Mick said to Rocky. Huh? You, Women, weaken legs, rock! <laughs> anyway. Oh, 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 and please, please don't tell me what a great personality she's got, because that's like female code for she looks like a goat or something. <laughs> I'm kidding. A Latina. Huh. Okay, okay, I'll go. I'll go. But I swear to God, Monica, if this is a train wreck, I'm coming for you and your unborn children. Oh, and uh, thanks. See you. What's my perfect crime? Okay. <laughs> I break into a Tiffany's at midnight. Do I go for the diamonds? Hell no, too obvious. <laughs> I go for the chandelier. It's priceless. As I'm taking it down, a woman catches me, okay? She tells me to stop, that it's her father's business. She's Tiffany. <laughs> I tell her no and we make love all night. The cops are gonna be looking for me, right? So I tell her to meet me in Mexico, but I go to Canada. I don't trust her. And I like the cold. 30 years later, I get a postcard. I have a, I have a son. He's now the chief of police. Uh-oh. I tell him to meet me in Paris, but I don't go. I'm a criminal, not a romantic. Are you kidding me? They're gonna want revenge. Too bad for them. I've changed my identity to Mary Luann Stevens. A whole new life with nothing on the horizon. Except for everything. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Last night, right from the start, I knew I was bombing. You know, I knew right at the beginning, you know, I sounded so big and phony, I'm like, oh, hey, how's it going in Denmark, right? <laughs> and I was just babbling there, I couldn't get a hold of it. I see this kid in the second row, 16, obviously, he's just dragged there, right? Obviously. And then I'm just there, and I'm like, I don't know what to do, I don't know what to do, I don't know what to do, oh my god. And then I just like, you know what, just start it, you know what I mean? Just start it, okay? And I was, to be or not to be, <laughs> that is the question. Whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune or to suffer arms and opposing and blah, 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 blah. And I finished it and I talked and I was just looking there. And I looked up and the kid was listening. <laughs> and the entire audience was just completely silent, totally focused on me. I was Hamlet. And then I, I lasted for like 10 seconds and I went back to hell and I stayed there. But in that one minute, in that one moment, I had them. I was, I was Hamlet. I had it. Hamlet. Thank you. Oh, hi. You know, I could sit here and be all new age, sensitive, caring, compassionate, sincere. 
all that good stuff, like I'm sure most of these other guys are doing. Yeah. Yeah. I could ask you about your life, about you, what you hope to get from being here today, what you're looking for in a man, your hopes for the future, your dreams for the rest of your life. I could do that. But I've been there, done that. We've only got a minute here, so I'm going to cut right to the chase, if that's OK. <clears throat> Sex is still very important to me. So if we were to go out, I'd like to get right to it, if you know what I mean. <laughs> we don't have much time left, uh, no offense. I mean, the other stuff is important, too, but sex is the most important. At our age, what do we have to lose? I mean, what am I afraid of, herpes? <laughs> so I have herpes for a few years, and then what? I'm dead anyway. <laughs> I mean, uh, I don't have herpes, but it's okay if you do. <laughs> so uh, let's have some fun, huh? Thank you. <laughs> Sorry for interrupting. Morning, everyone. Mr. Baker, our new principal. It's an honor, sir. Uh, I'm sure Diane informed you of my situation. Oh, I'm sorry, Miss Sutherland. <laughs> She's a riot. Anyway, I wanted to introduce myself. I'm Johnny Malloy. I'm a junior here at Beautiful Jefferson High. You may have heard of me. I was the one who convinced the school board to purchase all new textbooks and to rebuild the stage for the drama department. No? Okay. Anyway, I wanted to let you know that you'll never have to worry about this fine establishment while I'm here. You see, I'm the eyes, ears, and heart of this place, and you won't have to worry about a thing ever. But just in case if you do, here's my card. It has all my pertinent details as well as my personal schedule on it. Well, Mr. Baker, thank you so much for your time. Have a wonderful day. You too, Diane. Yeah. See? <laughs> Hello? Petey? Well, this is Bertha Bue Miller. <laughs> Now, I just want you to shut up and listen to me. We have a very serious situation on our hands here, Petey. My son Jody has a bad habit. It's as bad as a drug habit. He has a dog habit. He has a psychological addiction to these dogs, Petey, and you are a puppy pusher. Now, I have put up with Shep, Wolfie, Trixie, Bingo, Blossom, Sweet Nothing, Dolly, and Thunder, but if that little yippy half rat that little yippy half chihuahua you were just talking about on the radio shows up at my house, Petey. They will have to drag the river bottom to find your body. I mean business, Petey. I'm as serious as a stroke. I will not be the mother to an addict, whether he's on opium or basset hounds. Scene. <laughs> Hi, I am Juan, and well, I am a vampire. Yeah, I wasn't expecting you all to say, hi, Juan, or anything. <laughs> and I know what you are thinking. What is a vampire doing here at an AA meeting, right? And with a tan. <laughs> you see, there aren't a lot of places an unhappy vampire can go for support. <laughs> yes, I tried Coda. Boy, that was a train wreck. They kept trying to convince me that I needed more self-esteem. More self-esteem? Voy a vivir para siempre! I mean, I'm going to live forever for crying out loud! <laughs> no. I have a drinking problem. <laughs> Just like all of you. I drink too much. But it's only because I have to, because if I don't, well, I actually, I don't know what happens. Anyway. I really gotta get a handle on my drinking because it's becoming a bloody mess out there. <laughs> Thank you. Why are you not looking happy, John? Oh, I do very well for myself here. Three years in this new country and I quickly turn a poor boy from Gujarat, me, into a rich man with much cash. I quickly learn to figure out things when I come to this new country with all its strange customs, its different ways of doing things and seeing the world, not eating roti and curry all the time and seeing ladies fully wrapped in sarees. I love the huge portions of food here and amazing size of buildings. Also, the fantastic 
cleavage of women I see everywhere. <laughs> My God, what is in the water? There are so many women here as so well. Gorgeous to look at. So you see. I'm living my American dreams. Thank you. <laughs> Everyone is boring. At some imperceptible moment, everybody became absolutely shuffle your feet, stare out the window, boring. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I try. I, I've read all the books. I can imagine people in their underwear. Yeah, that helps for a little while. Then their underwear starts to bore me. So I imagine them without their underwear. And then their embarrassment starts to bore me. So I imagine them in my underwear, which is moderately exciting until they freak out because I'm staring at them. So finally, I, I, I try to imagine these people as someone else. And soon that person bores me. So I try to imagine that person as someone else, and soon that person bores me, and so on and so on and so on, until I've imagined them all into something so small and distant and insignificant that there is nothing left but me, standing alone. All I'm saying is this. Don't step out your door in the morning until you've thought of something interesting to say. See? <laughs>